Hello and welcome to Tech Meets Wisdom. Today's guest is Maman Saura. She's a freelance photographer who's traveled the world and will bring us her incredible images from the world and also share stories about water shortages. Stay tuned for more. Welcome to the show, Maman. Thank it's you. So, it's so lovely to have you here. Thank you for having me here. Absolutely. So you've traveled the world and you've, you've, uh, you've conquered so many things. But I think, first of all, it's so wonderful. I can't believe that you're here on the show because we just met about not too long ago. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, our daughters are friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how, how we met. That's right. And the and I just saw some of your images that you were showing me. I, I was I fell in love with them, because the details of them and and the stories that you had to tell, I had to bring you on the show. Thank you. So you could share more. <laughs> so you, so please tell us, um, how did you even start doing this? Because it's so incredible what you do. So I used to be a teacher first, a psychologist then, and then I became a marketing manager in a company. And then um, I had uh, a son and I had severe complications on the delivery. So mm -hmm. after I have that experience, I woke up after a coma and said, I want to do something in my life that it's worth it. Wow. Uh, so I changed professions and I became a photographer. And at the beginning I was just photographing, you know, families, kids, uh, events. And then by chance I went to an event where an organization that was working with water was there and they had fantastic message but it didn't touch me at all. And so I talked to the founder and I said, well, you have a great message, but just didn't really ring a bell for me. Um, and he said, well, we are going to Kenya next week. Will you join us and show me what you mean? And I said, yes. And that changed my life. Well, That's until it. you went to Kenya. I went to Kenya. And you went to a village. I uh, went to several villages. I went to actually Kenya and Ethiopia on that first trip. Uh -huh. Uh, you go to very, very remote areas. So I had been in remote areas because I'm a big hiker, but mm -hmm. never to document these, you know, people. Um, so it was a great experience. Um, I learned a lot on that first trip um, because you see a lot of national geographic things, but a different thing is to be there and be with the people. The experience. It's the like experience. seeing a mountain in a picture. That's but right. To be on the mountain is That's a different That's right. Experience. It's it's the sounds. The you go into their houses, how they receive you, how you connect with them, um, and I I just love it so much. I just came back and I told my husband, "I'm that's it. That's what I'm doing the rest of my life, and that's what I'm doing." Wow. And so there's one of the things that you told you told me about was the water problems that yeah. you saw. So. When you start traveling to remote areas, uh, there are several problems that become very obvious. Uh, one, it's, it's uh, the water. I think one and the first one, it's the water. So most of the remote villages around the world don't have access to clean water. Um, and so no matter where you travel, it's, it's all around the world. Even if you go to the San Joaquin Valley, there is no water there. Um, so water stops you from doing almost everything else. So if you don't have water, people don't have education. Kids cannot go to school. Uh, it's like it's a compounding problem. So I decided that I wanted to focus on women and children, and water was the first thing that affects them. So mm -hmm. that's, that's why I decided to document that. And it's, um, it's terrible to see what happens when kids don't have access to water. Yeah. They, they walk you know, 10 kilometers or uh, what is it, miles? It's eight miles. Uh, mm -hmm. When they should be they, in school or they something. They should be in a school. They're um, walking to get water. That's right. I'm, and it's mainly, unfortunately, mainly girls. girls. So I have a daughter, and, and this became a personal thing for me. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's every girl should be in a school. Um, every woman, every mom should be able to send their kids to school, boys or girls, but, you know, it's send them. 
without water, they spend, all these women, all these children spend most of the day walking to collect water. And in many cases, they collect dirty water, which has the different implications. It's not only you spend, you know, half of your day walking, but then you're drinking very polluted water. Um, and that what? means you're going to get sick. I think as soon. you're telling the story, we have some images that we can bring up and, and uh, we can take a look at that yes. as you're talking about. And this is a village, you took these images in a village called uh, Samburu? In the area of Kenya, it's about five hours from Nairobi going towards mm -hmm. the north and it's a very dry area. It's, it's most of the year uh, there is no water around. Um, mm -hmm. And most of the women spend... Um, Oh no! These images are from Mongolia. Yeah, that these this are from a, Mongolia. This is a different, uh, different uh, uh, place. But yes, so you were talk, talking about. We'll come back to this. Uh, there, there we go. We have the yeah. image now. So most of, of the, uh, I, I work for organizations that bring uh, a well, like the one that you see on the background, mm -hmm. and those wells become a social network. It's like here, we go and have a coffee with friends. Yeah. There, all the women get together. They uh, make the beads that you see on their neck. They make all these beads. Uh, it's almost the place where they can socialize, make mm -hmm. new ideas for business and everything. So that's, that's uh, what the organizations do. They bring these uh, wells. It takes, it's not that deep, but it just cleans the water. The water that mm -hmm. uh, they collect, it's clean. And they put it in locations that they still have to carry the water, but it's maybe one kilometer versus, you know, it's, it's, it's probably like a 10 minute walk now versus five hours. Uh, you know what's incredible? Look at these happy faces. And I love these images that you've captured. The, the kids are happy and the women are happy. Uh, the thing is in places like Kenya is when you don't have access to water and you're collecting water, um, you go to pretty dangerous places. So there are several mm -hmm. cases where uh, crocodiles will come out of the water and drag you. Oh, there wow. are places where the water is, um, there are so many cows around that the water is it's dirty. So the kids really know the difference and they mm -hmm. can really play yes. a little bit with the water. They don't get to play much, but, and it it's, uh, makes a huge difference. Once the water is there, then schools start happening, uh, yes. businesses start happening, gardening, the food improves because sure. they start doing all these things. Um, and that's the traditional Samburu uh, clothes. It's, uh, it's very colorful. It's, uh, beautiful. it's just beautiful. Um, all, these, all these kids, all these girls are really happy because they will be going to school because of the water. Yes, yeah. of course. And that happens in many places. Um, this is a mom that I, I actually have seen her now. I have been working with this organization, the Samburu Project, for 10 years. So I have seen her pregnant with every kid, and I, I know her family pretty well. Oh, so funny. I will be going there in June, and I will see her. Um, and her life has changed. She, she, all the kids are in a school. Uh, they started a small business, like a small shop. So things are improving mm -hmm. at, at the moment you bring the water. Yes. Um, there's a lot of kids uh, taking care of their uh, brothers and sisters. Yes. Uh, so there is a much more quality time that you can spend with your kids when you can spend time with them. And we all know that. So, yes, of course. Um, and this is actually how the kids are when there is no water. So the kids will dig a hole in the sand mm -hmm. and that hole keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper because every time someone comes, they have to dig a little bit more to get to water. It's dirty water, but that's the only source of water they have. Um, and so those holes become a big problem by the end of the um, dry season. They can actually, they might need a steps to go down uh, and they can crumble down. So they, they become pretty... Um, Just a hazard. It's, so. it's a very big uh, hazard. And then mm. that's the water that you will get in one of those uh, wells that hand dig well mm -hmm. versus the clean water that you can get on the other wells. Mm, wow. um, and this happens everywhere in India, in, uh, you know, Bangladesh has a huge problem. Yes. Um, it's, it's all over the place. And That's there are many incredible. organizations doing work for water, but sure. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm, I'm sort of speechless right now after seeing those images and the story that you're telling because it's heartbreaking, you know, it, to it know that, that our world has this going on. It's actually, um, if you think about it, it's about 800 million people lack access to clean water. Um, and people don't understand. We, we take it so much for granted. Um, and look at our water bottles, like we sell, we buy all but kinds it's of water not bottles. It's not just to... that, it's, it's um, you know, you take a shower, you take it for granted, yes. you brush your teeth. It's all health thing related at the end. Um, some of these people, uh, they go five kilometers co to collect water, they come back, and they still have dirty water to cook for their oh. kids. So it's, it's pretty dramatic. Wow. So coming back to you, you have such a passion for this, and that's an incredible story about, you know, your son and you're giving birth and you're in a coma. And, yes, I did. <laughs> and it's, and out of, when you come out, we wake up, you're like, okay, my life needs to change. And I, I need to implement something a little bit more meaningful. Um, and yeah, I, I think that I have a lot of meaningful relationships before that, but I think that that made me more determined to pursue something that will help someone else, not just, you know, mm -hmm. and, the more you travel to all these places, the more you um, become a connect with them, and the more you want to show to other people what you you know what you see, because I think there's a lot of misconception uh, on all these places. The, the things we don't yes. know, we we think it's dangerous or, um, and. These people are, are so friendly, so generous with everything they have. I, I wish I could take everyone with me and, yeah. and make them see it. I think we could have a much better world if we all connect that way. I was noticing that in your pictures, like the, the pictures, the children look so happy. That's and an interesting thing about being a photographer. Not all photographers are the same. I think that reflects a lot my relationship with the people around me. Yes. And uh, all my pictures are always happy because I'm having a blast with them. Yes, and they're pulling, having a blast with me. Right. You're pulling something so, out of them. And yeah. that's where I think some of the impo emotional intelligence part we, we Correct. were talking about. It's, it's, uh, you don't have, I don't have a common language in most of these places. So many times you have a translator that is explaining more or less what, what they're saying or what you are trying to tell them. But there's a lot of nonverbal communication. And um, I, th through the years, I don't, I don't even know how I do it. I just talk to them and, and we connect. Well, they say it's the language of the heart. Yes, very much. And I am really attached to all these when people. You, when you become human, and you there's do. only one religion, which is the religion of love, and yes, you're human. And, and people mm -hmm. very much react to that uh, mm -hmm. immediately. So um, one of the things in photography is you have to uh, become invisible. They have to trust you right away. And so I, I don't know how I do it, but I go there, and within five minutes, I'm playing with the kids, and I'm singing, and I'm dancing, and I'm taking photographs. And mm -hmm. by the third day, they don't even think I'm a foreigner. I'm just part of their group. And that's what makes the difference in the photographs. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. So what else have you seen? Um, the water is a problem. What else do you see that can maybe help girls, especially? Or, or what do you think is something that people should be doing or can do that can help um, this kind of a situation in our world? So um, there's two, hmm. two, two fold to my question. One is girls and the other is water. It's both connected yes, to each other. So they are very connected to mm -hmm. each other. Um, I, I, I think that it's such a big problem that I will say everyone should be somehow involved with that. Um, there is not one single organization that you can say, oh, this is the right place to go. Um, I like to work with the smaller organizations because they do follow through with everything so like like the one that I'm working right now the Samburu project it's they put the water but they also make sure the girls go to school and they also are putting water in the schools and they are also building uh, workshops for the women so they send the kids to school so I will say find your local organization that it's a small that you know what they are doing and that promotes you know water first like before anything else and then 
you know, education of the girls, uh, business for the women, uh, because it does change. Uh, women, in, in, if you give a small amount of money to a woman, she'll make gold out of it in, mm -hmm. in any of these places. Of course, you hear all these uh, women that take uh, small loans, those Kiva loans and yes. things like that, and they it's turn, absolutely. they it's sell eggs or milk or whatever they sell, and they turn their whole family situation around. But it's, it, that's where we are so similar. Like, I will do mm -hmm. anything for my kids. You know, it's, it's anything. And these women are exactly the same. So if, if you're giving them an opportunity to say, okay, here's an opportunity for your kids, they're going to do anything, anything to make it happen. Yes. Um, so that will be my advice is do get, get in there. It, it help five women, 10 women to get started on that because it just changed a whole village. Wow. One woman can change a whole village. Wow, that's incredible. So um, there were some other travels that you've had. Oh, I travel a lot. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, you have. <laughs> I love traveling. Uh -huh. And what, um, what other, uh, what's, what stands out to you in your mind? When you go to bed at night, you're like, if, if you had to you know, think about going to another place, what stands out in your mind? Like in a place to go? Sure, or yeah. I, actually, I don't have any place to go specific. I, I, I'm very much, um, I like traveling to places that um, are almost disappearing right now. Uh -huh. So in the last uh, 10 years, I think I have traveled to very remote areas of Myanmar or Mongolia where there are tribes that are vanishing. Um, and I, I like that. I like the banishing ba tribes. Uh huh. You like the banishing tribes. Um, so it's it's the that's that's hard for me to comprehend because it's um, you know it's like we're not related to that like seeing the tribes and but ha, ha, is it the water that's making them disappear? No, or no. What, it's what? cultural things. Is uh, like I'll give you an example. There yeah. is uh, women with tattoo faces oh, in, yeah. in Burma. Uh, that's not allowed anymore. Oh. So most of those women are now 80 years old, 85, 90. Uh, mm. One of my favorite women, it's, a, it's an old nun that is 102 years old in a very, very remote village in Burma. Uh, and so once these women die, that's, that's, that's it. done, that's it. No one else is going to do it. Uh, the eagle hunters in Mongolia, it's you know, there are maybe three hundreds of them left. Once they are gone, that's it. Well, no one have, will do it. We have pictures of the Mongolia since you yes. said that. So let's let's bring up the pictures for of Mongolia now and take a look at what's there. So that's uh, that's a girl, which is a new thing. Mongolian, uh -huh. um, you know, they they originally it was only men, and now it's changing. There was a very famous Disney movie that uh, had a girl. Yeah. Uh, what is she doing? She's actually calling her eagle. So That's they incredible. train eagles. They get wow. uh, eagles when they get, they go to the nest and get the eagles and they train them to hunt for rabbits and foxes and, and they wow. hunt with them for 10 years and then they uh -huh. release, release them to the wild. Oh. So that's the commitment. They will work with their eagle and uh -huh. for 10 years they do everything we'll look together. Look at the next picture. And, um, and then they release Wow, them. look at this picture. What is this all about? It's, uh, so the way they do it, it's they always have the eagle on top of a mountain and uh -huh. uh, someone else will hold it and the owner of the eagle will go down and call the eagle to come. And on that process, they might have the rabbits or whatever it is they're hunting for. Um, oh. It's quite a relationship with their eagle. Wow, the eagles are so comfortably sitting. Yeah, they, they, you know, they are used to it. It's, it's amazing. So I spent a, a whole week living with them in one of their girls. And it's great because you can't get a really good photograph if you're just going. And a lot of people think it's just got there, snap a shot. You actually have to spend time with people. You have to become invisible. They have to trust you, and then it's when you, I think, you get photographs that are meaningful. Mm, yeah. That's beautiful. And the love they have for these animals, it's incredible. Um, 
They also have um, um, competition. Is they do they have, have a competition. It's becoming a very popular thing to go mm -hmm. to the eagle hunters competitions. Uh, but none of the eagles ever get hurt in any of this. Uh, I, I wish I could say yes. I mean, most of the time, no. But you know, it's it's a dangerous it's a sport. A sport. Uh -huh. It's actually not a sport. It's it's a, it's how they survive with mm -hmm. the eagle hunting. Uh, but they do care for the eagles more than anything else. You this can picture imagine. is incredible. Yeah, the, the eagles the are of detail. The span of those, um, you know, of the wings. It's just and. Uh, when they fly over your head, you just hear this zoom. It's, wow. it's, it's incredible, yeah. So I love going to places like this because you see those places in, in you know, whatever, yeah. National Geographic. Or, exactly. Uh -huh. But one thing is to see it and read it, and another thing is to go there and talk, in, talk to the people. And I think we have a tendency to idealize this because of National Geographic. Mm -hmm. The reality of life in many of these cases is they also need to go and cook food and go buy in food or, you know, keep their houses. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this picture so probably depicts a little bit more of them riding together. And that's when they, they, so when the festival start, they all go around with all their eagles. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, as you can see, it's starting to be dusty. It gets really 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 dusty oh yeah uh, your goggles and then they have a whole competition so they have to throw the eagles um you know hunt uh, going from the mountain call them how fast they call them how fast they turn around the horses so they do all type of competition it's it's pretty fascinating wow it's beautiful wow. and you were there during this festival yes I was there during Did you plan festival. it out and go the, during yeah, that time? Yeah, we, we, I have been in Mongolia uh, now three times and I'm, I'm planning the fourth time. It takes a lot of planning because there's no roads in Mongolia. So yeah. for all the moment you leave the capital, you are in the middle of nowhere. Um, so I normally, you know, it takes two, three years to plan some of these things. Yeah. Yeah. These pictures are incredible. Like this picture is just beautiful. And the control of the horses, it's incredible. I, um, when we were, <laughs> I thought I'm going to ride a horse, but the terrain is so dangerous. It's so, mm. uh, it, it, you can't ride yeah, a horse unless you riders. grow up like that. And they, mm -hmm. they go everywhere riding like that. Yeah. I guess you have to be really yeah. trained from You do have birth to be trained, yeah. In uh, how to maneuver in those, that terrain and... That's and right. All of that. That's beautiful. Yeah. What other adventures have you had that, that you can say is the, one of your favorites? So not an adventure. One of my favorite thing it's it's Haiti. Believe it or not, Haiti it's a forgotten place right now, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So I have been documenting what's happening in some of the hospitals, and it, it's kind of sad right now. It's um, the people are fantastic. Uh, but the help is drying out and and they don't have anything. So I love going there because it's uh, very rewarding to be with them and working with them. Since you've seen so much of this all over the place, all over the world, basically, what what's something that, what's a message that you personally would like to tell the world or you want to share? Oh, I think two things. <laughs> one is water. Please, please, please look at, you know, look around, spend one day, um, get, um, you know, 40 gallons of water and try to go through your day with that amount of water and see if you can. Mm -hmm. you, most of us cannot. Uh, it's, it's most of the, you know, 800 million don't have that water. Um, and the other thing is try to um, open your mind to the fact that we are all humans and we are all wanted the same thing and and sometimes you just need to before you do a judgment you need to learn more about that people you know those people or um, I think we need to learn more about what's happening in the other parts of the world and um, understand that we are all connected even if we don't think so absolutely yeah. Uh, yeah, it's 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 incredible when we start thinking about the world that humans are human beings. Yeah, and they're delightful. 
it's our circumstances, even the circumstances of such people like that we saw in Africa, it doesn't impact how they feel inside. Yeah, no. It's, that they're so full of love, then we have to think about what's going on in America. It's, you know? uh, I think we need to learn how to understand each other. Um, yeah, patience, tolerance. Patience, listening. I, every time I travel, I realize that what is white here, it's black there, or what is black there is white, you know, in the, another place. So um, if there's, it's amazing because you will think, I know already that I, I don't have prejudice, and then I go to a new place and I, I realize I do still thought that something was one way or another. So the reason I think I keep traveling, it's because I learn every single time a new thing. Yeah, and cr traveling changes your mind. It changes your mind, and it changes the way you understand people. So mm -hmm. I love traveling, I love photographing, and I love listening. Listening is the thing that ultimately, you know, it, it's what I attracts me. I go to all these places, and I listen to this woman, and I'm... I think, oh my God, it's like she's talking about her day going by, like da 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 da, and it's exactly like my day. <laughs> yeah. And it's we are so connected. It's it, it's incredible. It's an incredible feeling to connect yeah. with these people. That's that's really what you said is very important because it's you have to remove the circumstances, and when you come from heart to heart, you really do find that we are so similar yeah. in so many ways. It's not the skin color or what you wear or you know how much you have to eat, but it's really about who you are truly inside yeah. and it and it's powerful and i think that one thing i really like on these trips is everyone is so generous with their time they they share everything with you and i love that well we have about a minute left and um, this has been such an exciting and wonderful conversation with you, you. that um, you've taken us around the world with you and Thank you for that. It's just such an honor to have you here with us and uh, and to see what you have seen, and you've been you've come back to share it with us. So, thank you for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, and with that, we'd uh, stay tuned for more in Tech Meets Wisdom, and we'll be sharing more with you with more wonderful guests like Mama and Saura. Uh, you can see more of her stuff on. She has an Instagram following. And uh, your, your handle is called Maman underscore Saura. Mm -hmm. um, and we have the spelling on the screen somewhere. Um, please join us again next time and take care of yourself.